Hey folks, it's E. Chip and Robert. We are on the road, headed toward contentment, and we have a little surprise. I um, don't know if you can see it back there, but we are towing the mobile solar generator. That green thing. That green thing out the back window. And uh, we are, we decided to, oh, there's a tractor over there. <laughs> Dory. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted for a minute. Uh, we decided to bring it. Uh, it's it's been a real challenge trying to get the thing completed, but uh, uh, part of the challenge has been the heat and humidity uh, where we currently live. And we thought, well, you know what? We took it for we took the generator for a road test. Also been having a few suspension problems with it. But we took the generator for a road test. It was after a new set of shocks, new bumpers, bump stops, and stuff like that. And uh, I guess I felt semi-comfortable enough uh, towing it 600 miles to contentment and then another 600 miles back. So we're going to chance it. <laughs> we're sure it'll be okay. But, uh, um, you know, it's going a little slow and using a lot of gasoline getting it there. We stopped at a uh, local co-op here on the way and just had the uh, trailer weighed. Okay, everyone, we're weighing this sucker, and tell us, E-Chip, 8,000 pounds. Now, keep in mind, there are a few extra things in here, but not many, just a couple of extra things, I mean, that don't amount to more than, say, 50 pounds. This trailer weighs 2,820 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the load limit? Well, that axle will probably handle four, uh, two tons, so 4,000 the axle will. But I mean, there's really no rating. I... And keep in mind, this trailer is small. I mean, it is dinky. It's about four feet wide uh, by six feet long, plus another 40 some odd inches for the tongue, and about eight feet high. So it's very narrow and very tall. Sort of looks like a generator. And so we are. Uh, you know, towing a 3,000 pound, uh, you know, semi-guided missile behind us uh, <laughs> that uh, it has high voltage in it. So, oh, look at that. How's that for an adventure? But this is at, an adventure seeing that. Look at what? That. Sorry. Oh, the grain silo? Sorry. Oh, okay. There's a grain silo there and robbers fascinated by it. Uh, anyway, so how are you feeling about this? Well, I haven't really been worried. I was worried, you know, at first. Then I decided I wasn't going to be worried anymore. I was worried, yes. But then I decided not to be worried about it because it, I have... Because it's my problem. I have... <laughs> <laughs> no. I have every confidence in E-Chip's skill set. Mm -hmm. He's the smartest man I know. Smartest man you know. Oh, you are Boy, smartest. are you in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you have fixed every problem that we've had. I don't know. I guess I... I guess I know enough about things to be able to fix them. Lord knows I've made enough mistakes to be able to correct them. <laughs> well, that's true. No. <laughs> I have a whole skill set of fixing stuff I've broken, you know. <laughs> that whole skill set of that experience. Right? <laughs> all kinds of things. Not just certain things. It's all kinds of things I've broken. Well... <laughs> I've broken some things too. Or built wrong or whatever. Oh yeah, well. But you do, you fix everything. And of course, I don't really know what's going on. And I'm like, oh, I wonder how we're gonna fix that. Five minutes later, he's got a plan. And it works, almost every time. It usually involves bubble gum and bailing wire. He's okay. like, oh, in Vegas vacation, put the bubble gum in the dam, <laughs> uncle, whatever. What's his name? Uncle Fred. Cousin Eddie. Your cousin Eddie with bubble gum. <laughs> That's about right. I'm cousin Eddie. Isn't I? That's about right, Clark. <laughs> yes. I wonder if we if if we were to decide which one of us were which character. Definitely I'm not the mom. Although, yes, that would be cool because you know, Wayne Newton hit on her, you know, every woman's dream. So Wayne Newton is every woman's dream. <laughs> Did you know I used to deliver his newspaper? I know you said that. That's kind of cool. I grew up in Las Vegas, and so I delivered newspapers as a kid. 
and I delivered to a bunch of stars. I delivered to Siegfried and Roy before they were really well known. I delivered to Wayne Newton, Sergio Franchi, Jerry Vale, Liberace. Um, I can't remember who else. The Mills Brothers, I don't know, for those of you old enough to remember them, uh, one of them lived just down the street from us. And, uh, I don't know, Fay Ray. Um, oh, King Kong. Yeah, Fay Ray lived, I guess she lived out her retirement years in uh, Las Vegas. And uh, uh, so, Fay Ray, I forget, I can't remember who else, but I delivered think... newspapers to a few stars. I, I, that's all I remember now. So you've had some, did you ever see any of these people or talk to any of them? No. Interestingly enough, you know, when you deliver the newspaper, they directly, they paid the newspaper directly and I just got paid from them. So it wasn't like I had to go door to door every month and collect from them. It was a direct billing kind of thing. Um, no, I never did. Never met any of them. I did meet Brian Keith. Oh. In a yeah. drugstore as a kid. I worked in a drugstore and he walked in one day and I uh, got to meet him. Um, Judge Reinhold from uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Uh huh. I met him as a young man at a uh, men's retreat. Well, so is he probably about in our age range? I think he's just, he a, older? he's just a slightly older than me, I think. Nice guy. Was he? Was he nice? Yeah, he's real nice. Very personable, friendly, outgoing. Is uh, he really tall? He looks yes, really he's tall, tall in movies. He's tall. He's over six feet. I'm sure. Yeah, I always thought he was kind of a. I mean, of course, not knowing him personally, he seemed like he was kind of a cool character, a cool guy. So. Yeah. Are we going the right way? No. Where are we going? Well, we made a mistake. Oh, oops. Made a wrong turn. Oh, oh, I thought we were going to get to go fishing right now. No. Maybe later. we got to get to contentment. Well, it's got to be dark. I know, to... but I was hoping you were taking me to that lake. You know what I'm looking forward to? Co cool temperatures. Cool temperatures and having my camping breakfast fixed over in, uh, on, in an electric skillet powered by the sun. I want to cook something in that Dutch oven. I hope we can have a fire. That would be nice. I'm sure we can do it. Well, I am super excited about those horses. I'm telling you, that's all I've been thinking about, but not really. But I really want to get big carrots this time and then have them right there. That would be so fun. I can't believe they actually came and got in the car. Stuck his head right in the car. Or her head, whatever it was. And I want to see an elk. Hopefully we'll be out there and some elk will just come walking right by us. But they probably won't because they'll smell us and they'll run away. That area of the country has one of those, I think it's the largest or second largest elk herd in the nation. Really? And I hope we see a mountain lion. Why? Because that would be cool. That would be alright. We could be like in that movie. Or a movie. bobcat, or at least a bobcat. Well, you know in that movie, a mountain lion. Coyote. You didn't see it. Where did you see that movie, A Mountain Between Us? Where uh, they had that about. plane crash and everything, and a mountain lion came and tried to get them out of the plane, and they shot the mountain lion with a flare gun. Do mountain lions really just come attack you randomly out of the blue? In winter, because it was winter and very cold, maybe, but normally... Maybe if they're hungry, but it's uh, I don't think humans are exactly their choice of meal. Because you know... We don't, we don't exactly make easy prey. Well, but in movies, they always show just random animals yeah. just coming up and eating people and stuff. I mean, a pack of dogs will eat you. A pack of wild dogs. Well, but are they, if you were, if you were there, oh, what is that? Active what? Airfield. Oh. If you were there and a wolf by itself, which, do wolves run in lone, like lone wolf pack of one? Not normally, no. Usually run in a pack. But what about in that one movie I saw, and it was like two wolves because they're mates, and they were just there with their babies. Well, that could be. I 
smoke. So would two wolves just come attack you? I'm not sure that two wolves, I mean, maybe if they were really hungry, but I'm not sure two wolves uh, would feel confident enough taking down a human. I just don't know. I don't know anything about it. Huh. Well, because I always... But I mean, a pack, you know, uh, of, you know, four, five, maybe, I, I think they would feel confident, you know, attacking a, uh, a human. So, I wonder if there are rules, like if a bear comes out, you just, like, freeze. Are there wolf, wolf wolf rules? I don't know. Probably not. Well, Pretty smart. because I guess probably any animal, if you take off running, they're going to run after you and chase you. And I'm not sure if a bear, if you want to come across a bear, that freezing is the thing to do. Well, so people lied to me when I was a kid, like I'm going to come across a bear in the state in which we live. Yeah, they say if you come across a bear, you should immediately throw your hands, and, and you know, proximity may have something to do with it too. Um, you should immediately throw your hands up, you know, spread yourself out to make yourself look as big as and menacing as possible and make a whole lot of horrible noise. And uh, it, you know, startles them and scares them and they run off. Hmm. Yeah, on the other hand, <laughs> I think that's true for, you know, like brown bears or black bears maybe. <laughs> but not a grizzly bear? Yeah, probably not a grizzly. <laughs> I mean, it might work with a grizzly, but well. might startle them enough where they run off. But, uh, and then you better get out of there in case he changes his mind. <laughs> well, we had a big gigantic blowout. It obliterated the other tire. Okay, thanks. And so we found another one. We've got to get another tire. But anyway, it was completely smashed. Side. Yes, along the road, in the middle of nowhere, basically. Um, fortunately, we had enough power remaining in the batteries. Each oh. ship was able we, to... We had plenty of power. We still do. Well, I know, but I mean, I don't know how long... Oops. I don't know how long it's, go, it's supposed to last without being charged, you know? 
about eight hours. So ETIP was able to weld new bump stops on and things like that and get us back on the road. So we had to get up and get some more repairs made. So we found a place that uh, immobilized the suspension. They welded some metal, I don't know, bars of some sort to it. And so now the trailer is just, I guess, it's got not, a, it has no suspension anymore. It's rigid. It's a rigid thing. Because <laughs> the weight is so great in that trailer that, uh, you know, trying to find a suspension that could handle it would just be cost prohibitive. And um, the tra trailer, uh, you know, the, the thing rocks so much on that weak suspension that uh, it literally shredded the tire from rocking back and forth. The tire rubbed up against the side of the trailer and it shredded it. And that's what caused the blowout. So um, we decided to go ahead and just, you know, we're, we're trying to get this thing out to contentment. Uh, we're not going to mess with the suspension anymore on it. I mean, it's a temporary use trailer. It's not forever. And um, so, I, you know, weld the thing. And if we want to go ahead and knock off those welds later and put a, another, you know, proper trailer suspension on or something like that, if we choose to do that, we could do that. But, uh, you know, we had to make a decision to get this thing out here. Um, so, here we are. Uh, we're a day late getting out to contentment, but uh, we're going to make it. It's going to be fine. Yeah, by the way, folks, we are in uh, northern New Mexico. We are, right now, we are looking at Capulin Volcano. We're right at the base of it. Um, it's a very pretty spot. first night out here to enjoy the sunset it's at very nice Pittman. we didn't stay out here on the property last time but we're finally here we've got the tent set up and now we're just gonna wait here toast thanks for joining us folks someday we're gonna invite some of you out here it's super nice and it does it, you do look how beautiful that is you look amazing in that sunset light. You do, you do. Oh my gosh, it is so beautiful here. Mm -hmm. oh, and it's so quiet. Yeah, it is quiet and it is cool. Oh, I know. And peaceful. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so glad we decided to come on. We were so cool. Babe, look at it. I'm looking. Oh, and the mountain. I am almost speechless, which if you know me, that's really kind of hard to believe, <laughs> but I've never been in a place with, well, one time when we were up camping someplace else, but when I was a kid, but now as an adult and I appreciate things so much more than I did when I was 17, this is the most incredible feeling. I love it. And I just, this background is amazing. I know people are, I know I said it last time, people look at this background, everyone has asked me, there are no trees, do you have trees? And nope, there are no trees. But man, is this quiet, peaceful, and you, I don't, you don't hear the, you do not hear the train. <laughs> I just love it. This is the most amazing place. I cannot wait to get started building. I just love it. It's a place to build from, isn't it? I know. I know. And all of the hard work on that generator and the breakdown and all the stuff that we've had happen to us, this is worth it. Every bit of it is worth this being here and experiencing this and having this life adventure. You know, gosh, all the stuff we have been doing, you know, playing with batteries and inverters and building that that thing and uh, stuff like that. I mean, it all exists for no other purpose than to get us here. That's what this is all about. It's about being able to 
live on our own terms on land that we purchase that's away from all the hustle and bustle and bills and rules and ordinances and all the stuff that just makes life so so busy you know that we don't even have time to use our brains and think and apply it, it's just a very satisfying feeling to be able to bring that generator here and know that that is the machine that's going to build our home on this site someday soon and it's going to be awesome i mean just think two months ago that solar generator did not exist there was some trailer sitting in some lady's backyard or front yard or wherever it was you know that was just a platform with wheels on it and it all has come together just so we can be here right now and so that we can build a home on this site oh, i'm so excited about it. it's just awesome it's awesome i want to speak to those of you who live in cities okay where i have most of my life <sighs> There is so much more to life to be had than doing a nine to five, coming home and spending your evenings preparing for the next day so you can do another nine to five. There is so much more to life than spending your weekends mowing lawns and washing cars. Those of you who are as sick of it as I am, I so encourage you to, Consider a change. I mean, it could even be at home. You could do something like can your own food, grow a garden in your backyard. You could do any number of things to become closer to the things that sustain you and achieve so much more satisfaction. And I know I'm preaching, but uh, gosh, if it only knew how good it feels to be able to do more things for yourself to be able to grow your own food, to be able to build your own house, to be able to make your own way as much as you can. Yeah, it's hard work. It's a lot of hard work. <laughs> Miserable work at times. But gosh, you know, after two months of building that thing and being able to stand right here and bring it out here and to know that it'll power a welder and has enough power to build a home out here, I just think is awesome. And um, so, I don't know. I hope someday we can invite some of you folks out here so you can really enjoy this peace and quiet like we are and uh, just really gain an appreciation for a little bit of remoteness, a little bit of solitude, a little bit of peace. That's all I got to say. Oh,